Hello everyone, it's Jana here from Shanamatics and today I have a very special guest, Helen Sutton. Hello Helen and welcome to my channel, how are you? Hi Jana, thank you so much for having me on here. I feel like really honoured to be here <laughs> today, so thank you so much. I'm excellent, thanks. Um, so before we begin uh, our conversation, could you please tell us a few words about yourself? So as Jana said, I'm Helen. I'm a female fitness instructor, but I don't really like that blanket approach statement to what I do, because I think what I do personally is more of helping people, women in particular, lead healthier and happier lifestyles. And it's not just about fitness. It's about the whole umbrella that comes under health and fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, balance, happiness mindset and even though I'm my qualification state personal trainer which I, I never use that word because I don't see myself as a PT um just to, just because of the stigma behind it really maybe that's a personal perception but what I do is genuinely love helping people find their happiness in life through fitness exercise diet nutrition sleep everything that comes into it because I have such a huge passion for it that I when I found out my passion it was only a few years ago I'm 34 35 this year don't tell anyone <laughs> I, I don't know what I only got into fitness around it'll be eight years ago now and then a few years into it I was like I really want to help other people feel what I'm feeling it's like I found my calling and um, as the monks call it your dharma and I live my purpose every day. And I think that shines through in everything that I do because nothing ever feels like work. It's not a chore. I'm getting goosebumps talking about myself. But it's literally, I just love helping people. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's what I do. It's, um, I like that you mentioned mindset um, because the transformation towards better you begins with your mindset. Um, I know from experience that when you decide to <clears throat> become a healthier person, the first thing people struggle with is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's the old habits. Yeah, a million percent. And there's always that battle in your head. Oh, I really wanna have a bag of crisps for lunch today. You know, one bag of crisps is not gonna hurt. Maybe it won't hurt, but how many bags of crisps did you have to get where you are? Do you know what I mean? Um, exactly. What is, your, what is your advice, what is your experience when it comes to mindset and healthy living? I think, especially when people start out their fitness journey, and I'm going to say a lot of these generalised comments, and I don't mean it as in like, oh, we're off on a fitness journey. Sometimes I'll say things, but it's easier just to use those words. So when someone starts out on the fitness journey, they've probably got in a bit of a, a slump. I, I tend to work with mainly women that have hit that maybe mid-20s, early 30s, life's become a bit more sedentary, and they're like looking at the lifestyle and going, what happened here? How come I've piled on a few pounds? It's usually about a stone in weight. And they look at the lifestyle and go, where did this change? What happened? And it is, it, it's a realization. I think as well, because it happened to me. And then they'll start the journey. And if I'm really honest, the people that look at it more of a journey and the enjoyment of it and learning these new things and embracing them do a lot better. Whereas when it comes to the mindset of, unfortunately, in just in society, we have these quick fixes, slimming mm. clothes, things like that. I'm not going to name any of them. They work for some people. My experience of them, I've not done them personally, but my experience of working with women and with them, the quick fix doesn't work because mm. you have to shift, like you said, those habits. It's that those things that are ingrained in you. So as soon as you stop looking at it as, I've got to go for a run, I've got to eat this broccoli, I've got to eat this meal, and start looking at it, it's like, I get to go for a run or a walk and stop putting pressure on yourself and enjoying it finding yeah. the enjoyment in the process is where the mindset shifts and that's where change really does happen right um it's interesting that you say when people <clears throat> um are forcing themselves to uh to go for a run or eat healthy and i think 
it's I don't know what you think, but um, it's part of the it's part of the way we've been brought up, the way we live. We live on the go. You know, we don't have time to cook. We don't have time to exercise. In my opinion, if you want, you will find time to do it. Massively. I think there's a lot of um, stigma on social media at the minute with someone, mm. a celebrity, had said something like, everyone's got the same 24 hours in a day. And we're not saying that. It is harder if you've got young kids and you've got different things going on. But I know a single working from home mum who takes her kids to school in the buggy and runs, right? Because she enjoys running. You can find ways to be more active. Get your kids out. Be a role model, number yeah. one. Um, that, that's a huge thing for me to get out with your kids, go for a dog walk, do what you can. You don't have to go to a gym for an hour every day to change your life. You don't have to eat a salad for every meal. I wouldn't recommend it for breakfast anyway, but you don't have to completely overhaul your life. I think the problem is with society is we're told that we need to have this quick fix, fix, but a massive change that totally changes our lifestyle that we can't adhere to and stick to. Whereas realistically, just changing little things it's called habit stacking. If you've ever heard, have you heard of the book Atomic Habits? No, but you've mentioned habit stacking when we worked together last year. Such a good book as well. If you get a chance to read it, I, I think I listened to it. I listened to a lot of audiobooks. James Clear. Excellent. I recommend it for everyone, no matter what industry you work in or where you're at. It's just a really good mindset book and a great way to change your life because it, it tells you like, you don't need to overhaul your life. You just need to change one little thing. So especially when someone starts with me and we've got, say I've got like a blank canvas of a new client and we have our first consultation call and I look at their life and I tell like, tell me about your life. That's all I do. I'll go, tell me, tell me what you, your usual day-to-day -day life is. And what I'll do then is go, right, so could you get up 10 minutes early? I'm not saying get up at four every morning. You have to be mm. Richard Branson or, you know, the next big CEO of the world because we're not. We're just normal day-to-day -day people. Can you get up 10 minutes earlier? Have five minutes for yourself before the kids get up. Can you do a bit of meditation? And I'm not saying you have to meditate. Can you stop and just breathe for a second? Can you read a few pages of a book? So you, you can start that day with this better outlook instead of just being like, uh, uh, jumping up and into the day. There's so many more examples I can use for this, but the difference is when, when someone first starts, it's not about changing everything. It's about changing one thing. Mm. And consistently keeping that. And if it doesn't work, you reevaluate. You go, right, that didn't work. What can I do differently? It's not failure. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm useless. I'm rubbish, which is this negative self-talk that a lot of women tend to have on themselves. I'm generalizing for women because that's who I work with. There are men out there that do have similar um, blockers, but women tend to do this negative self-talk a lot mm -hmm. for some reason. I'm useless. I ate a Mars bar. But you're not useless. You're human. Why did you eat that Mars bar? Is it because you hadn't had breakfast? That's all it is. And I think sometimes the, not the problem, but the reason people can't progress is because they constantly do this loop. Mm -hmm. this loop. And I think that's where my job as a coach comes in. And I think everyone should get coached, whether you work with me or whether you work with, I don't care who you work with. I just want people to have better lives. But if you get a coach, they will then go, well, what about this? And when it comes to that, oh, I'm useless, I'm a failure, what will happen is, and it, I know for a fact what I say is, get a good coach, by the way. Get a positive coach. Yeah, yeah. There are some bad ones out there. Mm. But what I'll tend to do is go, no, you're not. That happened. It's in the past. Let's deal with it. Let's look at why it happened, and then let's move on from it. Yeah, it's simple. Let go. <clears throat> we're not taught to let go. We're just, um, we're programmed to be... Uh, really hard on ourselves you know and you just what we're not kind to ourselves um enough yet in my opinion i think people are definitely starting to realize that there is a better option for us but it's a it's a slow it's a slow process i saw a quote the other day probably months ago and it said would you speak to your best friend the way you talk to yourself and you just wouldn't oh that's a good thing yeah if you stop yourself, and this is where a lot of mindfulness comes in for me. I, I got into meditation a, a couple of years ago after saying to myself for ages that I can't do it because I'm too, as you can tell, I'm full of energy. But it really helps me and it sets up my day and it's something I do every day now and it's completely changed my life. Mm. But I think for me, what's helped me with meditation and mindfulness is 
you'll start, I'll still have the thoughts, they'll still come in your head, I'm human, but then I'll go, no, I'm not, yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm not grasping onto that thought and then running away with it, I'll tend to stop it in its tracks and be like, no, Helen, and bring it back, and that quote always it brings it back, like if you say something to yourself, would you say that to your best friend, and you wouldn't. That is a very good, that is a very wise quote. Yeah, yeah. It's not an original. I can't, I can't take credit for it. Good. Um, do you know, I've also, I've also noticed, um, well, many years ago, that people pay a lot of attention to the scale rather than the tape measure. <sighs> so I used to have scale that showed me, uh, muscle and fat percentage mm. i got rid of it by the way i don't i, I didn't i don't need it i have i've got tape measure which you've actually uh taught me to use because it's um it's more useful than an actual scale so what how does it work with fat loss and uh muscle gain because okay i do understand some people want to lose weight but it's not it's not a matter of becoming skinny and size, mm. size zero. It's mm. a matter of being strong, fit and healthy. Yeah. And I remember, I think I gave you this example with, let's say you put 100 um, kilogram obese men and 100 kilogram of fit men. It's the same weight. Yeah. But the shape of the body is different. Yeah. There's that really good picture that does the rounds. I can share it with you. You can attach a file to this if you want. And it's a... It's, uh, it's, I think it's a kilogram of muscle and a kilogram of fat next to each other. Oh, yeah. And it just shows that the fat is just takes up more area, more volume. So that's why it looks like more. So that's, they're the same weight, but fat takes up more, more space. Um, I love that point about scale weight. And it's something I harp on about all the time. And I think I have some great achievements with my clients and my girls that I work with. But when they say to me, Helen, I used to be obsessed with the scales and now I don't even have a pair. Is it a pair? Yeah, it's a pair, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'm literally like, that's amazing because unfortunately when it comes to scale weight, I would say it's the gravitational pull towards the earth. That's all it is, right? And unless you're in a critical condition where you're in the obese, sort of, you know, I wouldn't even say obese, it's morbidly obese category on the bmi scale which oh, that's a whole other can of worms that I'm. oh yes i know <laughs> that's another video <laughs> yeah so quickly the bmi scale as well unless you're morbidly obese and you're in risk of type 2 diabetes and you've been to see a doctor and you, you just you're just not well and um, because of poor diet nutrition and, and maybe other factors and sociological factors and psychological factors and there's so much that goes into it bmi is a great scale for everyone else it is not I'm classed as the overweight yeah, me too. Me you'd too. look at me and you'd look at me, you'd look at you and go, what? Oh. And it's because it does it on height and weight. So if you are average Joe and you just want to lose a couple of stone, a stone, a couple of stone, which unfortunately we, we do use weight as a metric when we're saying things like that, forget about BMI. You want to really work towards being the healthiest you can be and I think for me even not just a tape measure it's about how you feel mm. you don't know if you feel good the better you eat the better you sleep doing training will give you more energy and it sounds so counterintuitive because you're like well I'm doing I'm doing exercise and it gives me more energy because you're giving your body life if you think about you've got some fat here that's just existence fat is just a source on its own You've got muscle, you need blood pumping into that muscle. There's calcium in there. There's all different nutrients getting moved around. It's pl pumping that blood healthily around your body. So the more muscle you have in comparison to fat, you'll actually be using more energy and your body's using its vitality. It just makes so much more sense. But when you're first starting out and we are so conditioned, especially mm. with... Um, weekly weighing clubs which that'd be another video too <laughs> should we just park all these things for another video <laughs> yeah what not a bad idea <laughs> going somewhere and stepping on a scale in front of people number one no but then it's dictating to you whether you've done a good or a bad job you could have 
eating amazingly all week, you know, eating eight, I always use the 80 20 rule 80% nutrient dense food, food, fuel, food, same thing, food, 20% of the stuff you enjoy because life's for living. Um, you could have been walking the dog every day, you could be full of vitality, but the night before you could have eaten a lot of salt and you retain water and that number on the scale has gone up and you're like, what am I doing wrong? You're not, you're doing everything right. You are amazing. Don't let that number dictate to you how you should feel. This is, this is another reason why people should get a coach because I think people just get so lost out there if I ever see anyone on social media, whether they work with me or not, if they're weighing themselves, I'll always like offer free advice. I never push my advice on anyone because no one yeah. wants unsolicited advice. But I always just say, have you tried doing this as well? Especially when you first start out, I always say, I'll never go, oh, get rid of them now. What are you doing? No, because people are conditioned to use those skills. So mm. if I blanket approach said don't you dare use those scales and shout it at someone which I never do anyway I ain't got it in me they'd still be doing it behind my back mm. so why don't I just instead go have you tried this as well and over time the tape measure is getting lower because the volume is decreasing the mass the fat but the scale might stay the same or go higher yeah and then so then then the girls start going well I'm going to believe the tape measure Mm. and that's where change <clears throat> happens that's where the mind start, start, starts changing pictures are one of your best um feedback resources i wish i had more pictures of myself when i was a bit bigger than i, I had more fat i probably weighed the same actually but because over the years i've dropped the fat and gained the muscle yeah I'm still the same dress size dress size clothes fitting yes. clothes feel a bit looser but you get on the scale and you wear the same or more. What are you going to believe? Yeah. Yeah. Great point with the scales there. A little rant from me. Sorry. You are getting my trigger points today. That's fine. That's fine. I, uh, that's exactly the kind of energy I want for this uh, interview. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what was I said earlier, we live, we live such a busy life nowadays. Uh, people are always, always have excuses Mm -hmm. uh not to pay attention to their health um what would you advise um as a sort of simple routine uh as to how people to become uh healthier by having better diet and exercise a bit more I lost a bit of that. Simple routine. I don't know where Sim the sound went. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I'll keep it that way. Um, so, like uh, as I said, um, we have such busy lives nowadays yeah. and people just don't have the time to cook lunch, for example, prepare yeah. breakfast or to exercise. Yeah. What would you advise them uh, to make that change in starting to cook more often and exercise more often love this question right so people have really busy lives monday to friday mm. majority of people yeah but the whole weekend and you should have a rest you should get your feet up and i'm not saying to anyone and i never say this to meal plan meal prep sorry into meal plan just sitting down on a sunday and writing out your week can make a massive difference to your life write out your week Write out what you're going to eat for your meals. We tend to eat. Some people, when they start with me, sometimes go, but that's boring. I'm like, you, th that's just blockers. That's just them being negative. Yeah. Just try. I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. just try. <laughs> Please just try. <laughs> I don't tend to attract a lot of people like that, to be honest with you, because you, you attract the same energy yeah. as you are. So yeah. most people, when they first work with me, will, well, they come to me for a reason. They'll listen to me. You pay me. So listen, yeah. if you don't work, does work sit on a sunday plan your week write down what you're going to eat for the week i have oats every day for breakfast soup most days for lunch i know you eat quite similar things and then mm -hmm. you'll mix up meals also look at that week and think when can i get some movement in now like i said before it doesn't have to be an hour in the gym can you get up 10 minutes earlier and go for a walk half an hour earlier um can you turn off netflix and i'm not saying to stop your recreational lifestyle if you want to 
you know, I watch a bit of Netflix most evenings as like a switch off time. But if you want to change your life, do you need to watch three hours? Do you need to watch six hours? Do you need to stay up till half 11 at night? I think a lot of people make these excuses, but they don't actually evaluate what they're already doing. Mm -hmm. And for change to happen, you have to want to do it first. It, it, there's, everyone can tell you, you can have all these outside sources, you can make all these excuses, but until you actually try, yeah. you never make a difference. Yeah. I know you get up in the morning, you do your exercise and it's yeah. done for the day. The reason I like to exercise in the morning as well is one, I have more energy in the morning and that's yeah. just a personal preference. Yeah. And two, it's like, it's such a sense of achievement for the day. Tick. Yeah. I'd say it's hard when you first start doing it because I used to train in the evening years ago and I found that at the time I had a nine to five job, I was living in Australia I know. and I'd um, get home from work after my commute, it was about an hour commute and I'd been sat on a train and I'd be like, can't be bothered. Yeah. I put my gym on, I put my stupid gym gear on and I'd go to the gym because I knew it was good for me. And then after been months of doing this I was like why don't I switch this up and this is and it's it's funny with me because I've I've done a lot of stuff myself and that's how I can resonate with a lot of people I've not always been into fitness I've not always got up early I've not always eaten well I used to you know have a wild party lifestyle when I was a holiday rep in my 20s and that's why people come to me because they're like oh if, if I can do it I've had the experience you can do it as well so I literally thought I'm just going to try getting up early and going to the gym so I go to the gym, shower at the gym, and then go straight to work. Amazing. Yeah, that little change again. Yeah, yeah. Little change. If you just take, <clears throat> not you, Yana. Yana's got it nailed, guys. But if if people out there just make a small change, change change a habit, change something, just small, it'll make a big difference. Because what happens then is you make this little change and you start to see results and success, yeah. and that's motivation. So this is motivation. Motivation isn't this magic fairy dust that comes from nowhere. Everyone's always like, have you got so much motivation, Helen? I'm like, well, I do small things that mm. achieve results and then celebrate those results and then I want more. That's how you motivate yourself. And not every day is going to be easy. I love training. I love fitness. I love everything I do. I love living this lifestyle. But some days for me are even a struggle. But they're the days you've got to show up. Yeah. Yeah. And also when it comes to <clears throat> healthy eating and unhealthy eating, it's also important what you eat. Oh. I have noticed that since I've started eating green vegetables for lunch with protein, I don't feel hungry. Game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Um, usually when people first come to me as well, I'll say, right, tell me what you eat. And we'll go through there there because it's about you. I'm not going to tell you what to eat. I've never told you what to eat, did I, Anna? No, ever. No. I gave recommendations based on your diet. If you ever get a coach that gives you a blanket meal plan, run for a mile. It looks easy, but remember, it shouldn't be necessarily easy. Um, it shouldn't be a cookie cutter program. It should be personalized towards you. So I get all my clients to tell me what they eat. Then I'll make recommendations. One thing that always sticks in my mind is um, a girl that I've known for a while. She was she was in Fit Girl Club for quite a while. And she just turned around one day and went, I'm just really hungry by midday. And I was like, well, what are you having for breakfast? And she was having toast with honey or jam. So that's sugar and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with a bit of toast and jam now and again. But if she'd have added some fruit, some berries, banana, some protein. There's a bit of protein in peanut butter. I love peanut butter, but I'm on the fence about using it as a protein sauce because it's higher in fat than protein. Yeah. A boiled egg. If in doubt, stick an egg on it. Sorry for the vegans out there. Stick some tofu on it. But add a protein sauce and some nutrients to that meal and you'll see a difference. You will not yeah. be hungry by 10. If you're just getting sugar into your body, glucose, carbohydrates, nothing wrong with that. But if that's all you have in, it's quickly used up by the body and then you're hungry again. Until you change, you've got to have every meal as well. Think about the nutrient-dense food and how it's going to make you feel and add protein to every meal and snack if you can as well. Yeah, I. <clears throat> you taught me to um, think about my protein and I do now. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you said, you know, so people don't 
necessarily have time to go to the gym or, uh, or money probably to go to the gym. Yeah. Um, however, that's not an excuse, but people can exercise at home. Definitely. Yeah. Um, because I mean, it's a, if, you, if you buy dumbbells, for example, it's a one-off purchase. And some local parks, like our local park, they have equipped, there is equipment and it's absolutely free of charge. Yeah. There's so much you can do. You don't need to go to a gym. I think a big stigma for women, especially when they're starting the fitness journey, is places like gyms can be intimidating. They are seen as a big, like, scary place. Um, and that's not me generalising. It is just how, like, when I first started in gyms, I was always a bit like, plus we don't know what we're doing usually. Yeah. So it coach helps in that sense. But you don't have to even think that big. Like we said, start small. Get some dumbbells at home. Do some home workouts. I do online courses still. I've not just me you've got people like not to like promote anyone else but look at the body coach you can go on YouTube and do any of his hip workouts mm. there's millions upon millions of free videos and content you can go and do now that's like when people use excuses it's 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 nonsense really um I'm starting some local classes just for fun because one of my friends asked me and she was like, can you do some classes? And it, I think women like that community style as well. That's why yeah. I do online groups as well. Um, because people like to, you know, have that shared experience and yeah. share it. So it's not just me dictating to them. But um, I went to Sainsbury's the other week. Am I allowed to name stuff? Sainsbury's. And then... <laughs> I'm going to get sued by Sainsbury's. When you're massive, you might. So watch out. <laughs> um, and in the clearance hour, I got some dumbbells for these classes. For less than five oh yeah that's not yeah we got our rowing machine second hand 50 pounds yeah that's the it's, job and it's one payment and that's it yeah, and there's so much yeah. you can do so yeah no excuse yeah no, no excuse yeah. you don't have to train in a gym you can yeah. look at lockdown right oh, sorry the dreaded word but gosh i didn't lose any of my fitness I no me neither I, I, I think i actually became healthier so i don't know why people are whining about you know it's yeah, just another excuse well. and yeah. this is it right so I feel like sometimes you have two paths to go down and you're like I could work out or I could stay in bed for an extra hour and sleep to me is massive huge rest and recovery but when it comes to that lazy lying in bed slobbing around <laughs> sorry <laughs> I'm gonna get a name but there's, there's a choice yeah. and then you know like on an evening like I said just do an hour less of Netflix half yeah. an hour less you can still watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just less. Yeah, I watch the Big Bang Theory sometimes while I'm exercising. Oh, I just started that. Anyway, don't start me talking about that. <laughs> yeah. So um, people can... It's difficult to find what works for us. But once you find it, you'll be a very happy person. Would you? Would you agree? You know what? I always, I've always been quite an upbeat person. Felt like I always felt like I was happy, but the more I do stuff, the happier I feel. So I'm like, yeah. was I even happy before? Yeah. Was I? The more like I love exercising. I went out this morning, right down the road, my mum and dad's, and I went for a run around the block. It's a beautiful day here today, so mm. get out, shy, bit of vitamin D. That's really good for your energy as yeah. well. And I went for a run because I enjoy running. You don't have to run. I do it because I enjoy it. And I saw my friend with a with a little boy who was um, taking a daughter to school, and she stopped me. She was like, "Hi!" And I was, I couldn't stop speaking because I was like so excited because exercise just makes me full yeah. of that energy. It gives you endorphins. It might be hard at the start, and it is if you can get over that first little bit where it's a bit. <sighs> this is hard work. You start feeling the benefits, and you just feel great in your own skin. Yeah. Yeah, once I changed my um, eating habits and I started exercising on a regular basis, I felt a totally different person. Yeah. Exercising in the morning, great. I feel so energized yeah. and I'm ready for the day ahead. And when I look, you know, when I put my clothes on, everything fits. And eating well and eating enough. I think that's a big point as well to me. Yeah. I, people <laughs> look at my food and go, you eating all that? My mum says it sometimes. That's a, that's another podcast. Podcast. Yeah, another interview. Yeah, <laughs> because that's 
people's opinions affecting your psychology around food yeah but I'm like yeah I am and you should see how much I eat and then people are like how can you eat all that and be like this because I eat the right food I fuel my body yeah it's about the right food not the amount of food a massive pile of vegetables can be the same or less calories than a small takeaway do you know yeah. what I mean like that comparison of it so it's switching your mindset yeah. to these things yeah. and that is fueling your body it's a different life completely different life I skip out of bed every day um yeah I'll have my down days everyone does and I oh I got really frustrated recently at Christmas I got I got sick I got unwell just got a cold a really bad cold and I was like why am I getting ill I can't yeah. do anything better <laughs> my life couldn't be healthier I was, I, was so, I was so frustrated by it because I sleep well I eat well I do all this stuff but unfortunately you know we're just programmed to get a bit sick sometimes um, our immune systems will once in a while but I don't get sick nowhere near as no much as no me neither I um I you know when I I was a bit um I had a cough during the holidays as well and I thought it was because I wasn't too healthy but sometimes the body is just sending you those little signals telling you uh, that you need to slow down a little bit. Yeah, just have a just have a rest. That's my biggest learning curve over the past year or so um, is to take more rest. That was my yeah. problem because I got so into exercising and so into everything that it, I get addicted to it. I get, yeah. you know, but having those days off, rest days, doing mobility and stretching, things like yoga. I know you do yoga as well. Yeah so beneficial as well so now I do do that at least at least one maybe two days a week so um, my yoga teacher used to say your body is your best teacher and you have to listen to it definitely um do you would you like to uh do you have a message for our viewers uh before we go and uh of course how can they find you so message to the viewers will be this is a hard one <laughs> and you never shut me up and I'm like hmm. basically stop trying so hard like if you want to make a change in your life take action do it now you don't have to wait till Monday you don't have to wait till New Year's Day you don't have to wait till after your birthday you don't there's always going to be an occasion a social event or something like that make a small change do it today whether it's just changing your breakfast or going for a walk or doing you don't need to do this magic 10,000 steps a day right <laughs> not doing 2000 steps a day do 3000 steps a day if you're doing no exercise do a little bit of exercise start small and it compounds or oh, it builds up and yeah. then it, it's going to make you feel better when people people always ask me how am i so happy and this is how yeah it's my lifestyle and practice gratitude be grateful every day that makes such a difference on your mindset and then if it goes wrong get up and try again so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Don't be so negative to yourselves. People can find me. I have a website, www. Didn't need to say that, did I? Hello.pt.uk. <laughs> <laughs> I host online groups six week. I call them a shred, but basically I teach women in a group environment all about living a healthier lifestyle. And I also still do one to one online coaching as well if you do want any help or advice. But please, just message me. I, if you had a question or anything about any fitness, mindset, health, happiness, please just ask. I'm an open book. I'd rather just help people. And then if it's something that we work together with, great. If it's not, and I can still help you, great for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Helen, thank you very much for today's interview. I really enjoyed it. We had so much fun, didn't we? <laughs> I literally... You can tell it's my passion, though, about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love to talk about it. I love to talk anyway, but I, it just flows. Yeah. I could yeah. talk to you for hours, but we've got to get on with our lives. That's fine. Maybe next time we'll talk more. <laughs> we've got a few more conversations to have, haven't Absolutely, we? absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye.